Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you David Niven in Lorna Doom on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize the great novel Lorna Doone by the English writer Richard Blackmore. Lorna Doone was written over 80 years ago and was an immediate success, not only establishing its author's reputation, but beginning a popularity which has lasted to this day. It isn't hard to see why this story proved so attractive. It's full of open-air freshness and the spirit of adventure. Indeed, its hero and heroine have proved so memorable that nowadays the places where they lived in fiction are linked with their names for countless visiting tourists. Lorna Doone is certainly one of the romantic classics. The Doone Valley, or Exmoor, as you will find it written on the English maps, is one of the loveliest spots on earth. To star as our hero, and Lorna's hero, we are fortunate indeed to have with us that fine actor, David Niven. And now here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card and you'll find the card you want to send. Because Hallmark Cards are designed to say what you want to say, the way you want to say it, with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. And now, here is the first act of Richard Blackmore's Lorna Doone, starring David Niven. Picture a strange valley, dark in the Devon twilight. Glen Doone, it's called. And legend tells how the Doone family, a band of outlaws, in revenge for wrongs done them by the government, lived by plundering the countryside, always retreating afterwards to the valley where no outsider dare venture. It is John Ridd who tells our story. John Ridd, who fell in love with the mysterious, the lovely Lorna Doon. How can I tell you about Lorna, except to say that I've loved her all the days of my life, since time began, it seems. Perhaps my story rightfully begins when I was 12, when I was suddenly called home from school. How I looked forward to seeing my father, but when I arrived home, I was greeted only by my mother's tears. Oh, John. Oh, my poor boy. Your father is dead. Oh, no. Killed by those savages. Killed by the dunes. I am my father's only son. It is my duty to avenge you. No, my son, no. The dunes will kill you, too. Perhaps when you are a man. But not now, my son. Not now. But a 12-year-old feels more like a man than many a 30-year-old. So I headed for the valley no man of our community had ever visited, Glen Doon. I knew only one entrance, behind the whirlpool and waterfall of Bagworthy Stream, through the blackness of Bagworthy Wood, where each tree seemed to loom like a giant in the eyes of a 12-year-old. Painfully, 
I climbed the rocky steps of the waterfall. The ragged edges tore at my bare feet. And when at last I reached the top, I sank down, exhausted. you with pieces of my dress. Thank you. I've never seen anybody like you before. My name is John Ridd. What's yours? Lorna. What is your last name, Lorna? Doom. Do you hate me because of it? Oh, no, Lorna Doom. How could I hate you? Oh, go. Go quickly. They would kill you if they found you here. Please go. And... Take very good care of your feet, please. John Red. Until I was 22, I never visited Glendoon again. But a boy's heart heard the wind whisper her name from the depths of that strange valley. Though she belonged to the family of my enemies, I must see her again. The great rocky slide of Bagworthy Falls was still dark and difficult to climb, so the water which long ago touched my knees now was satisfied with my ankles. When I reached the top, she was standing there, almost as if she had been waiting for me. Hello. Oh, you don't remember me, but I remember you, Lorna Doon. As if I'd seen you every day of these long years. Of course. The boy who cut his feet so on the rocks. How are your feet, Master John? Your smile and your kindness and the tears in your eyes cured them in an instant. I remember. But you do not seem to remember, sir, how dangerous it is for you to be here. Tell me. Please tell me, Mistress Doom, why there is such terror in your eyes when, when you glance back towards Glen Doon. I'm afraid because I am a Doom. And there is no one to teach me what is right. Have you no mother or father, Lorna Doom? I have no remembrance of mother or father. Although they say my father was the eldest son of Sir Enfa Doom, who rules this tribe of robbers. I have heard of Sir Enfa Doom. Is he, is he not an old man? A very old man. And when he dies, they say I shall be queen of this valley of violence. Let me take you away. Oh, Master John Reed, how bravely you speak. It is not possible. Now, you must go quickly. No. And you must never come back. For I am to be married to Carver Doom. To Carver Doom? You have heard of him too, Master John. For he has a reputation as the fiercest of all the Dooms. Oh, I beg you, someone is coming. Return to your sunny outside world. And forget you ever heard the name of Lorna Doom. <laughs> I scrambled down the rocky defile, back to the outside world. But I carried with me the look in her eyes. I carried with me the feel of the air between us. I brought back from Glen Doon the knowledge that I was in love. And the whole valley beneath me echoed like a great bell. Doon! Doon! Lord Doon! Twenty times we met, in starlight and sunlight, in the cool, watery silence behind Bagworthy Falls. Each time, Lorna begged me never to return again. She might just as well have asked me not to return to light, to air, to life. Then, one day, she led me by the hand in the direction of Glendoon. 
Where are we going? See my grandfather. Sir Ensor Doon? He's dying. He wishes to speak to you. I have his promise no one will harm him. Well, why does he want to see me? Because I've told him I can never marry Carver. Because I'm in love with Master John Ritt. Oh, Lorna. Lorna led me past a dozen silent men, standing as motionless as great trees and into a low hut. The room was cold and dark with only two sputtering candles. Then I saw him, the oldest man I have ever seen, stern and silent, with death in his face. He sat upright in a chair with a loose red cloak thrown over him. On this, his white hair fell, and his pallid fingers seemed like yellowed marble. Only in his great black eyes fixed on me so solemnly did I see the life of his soul burning. Do you know what you have been doing, John Reed? Do you have sense enough to realize? I... I know I've set my eyes far above my rank. Ah, she is a doom. Sir, the Rids have been honest men twice as long as the Doons have been rogues. John. We have taken only what has been taken from us. Such as my father's life. You are a fool. Oh, I am too old to shout. Too old. I wish to die. Let me die knowing our princess will not toss her life away. Marrying a fool. Grandfather. I forbid you ever to see this child again. Sir, I will not listen to you. Then you will promise Lorna, child. Swear, swear, for I am so weary. The words are as knives in my mouth. Sir, we will not swear. Lorna will not, and I will not. Must I tell you? Will you force me... To tell you... Tell us what, Grandfather? It was your father who killed John Ridd's father, Lorna. Oh, no. And his father who killed yours at the same instant. Do you wish a double curse always over your heads? <laughs> Do you wish... <sighs> oh. Then, as if in a terrible dream, we knew... Sir Ensor Doon was dead, and the head of this tribe of, of robbers was now my beloved, my Lorna Doon. moment we will return to the second act of Lorna Doon starring David Niven. You know thoughtfulness and kindness are acquired habits. If you've ever been around when a child first starts learning how to share with a playmate you know what I mean. Even after we're grown most of us appreciate having special days to remind us to be thoughtful. That's why so many parents and educators have expressed appreciation of the new Hallmark May baskets. They offer a wonderful opportunity to teach children thoughtfulness. Many classes are having a May Basket project. The children make and distribute May Baskets filled with flowers or bits of candy to veterans' hospitals, children's hospitals, or adult shut-ins. And they're thoroughly enjoying this because the Hallmark May Baskets are so beautiful, they serve as inspiration for all forms of generosity. When you see how the children enjoy making and giving Hallmark May Baskets, you'll want several packages for your own children. Since they cost only 50 cents for a package of five different designs, you can easily do so. Stop in tomorrow and ask to see the new Hallmark May Baskets. And say, fathers, can you think of a nicer suggestion than for the children to make and give a May Basket to Mother on Mother's Day? Now back to James Hilton and the second act of Lorna Doon, starring David Niven. <laughs> Bag 
Bagworthy Wood, behind the black whirlpool of Bagworthy Stream, in a wilderness of rocks and crags lies Glen Doon. The outside world is Devon, the fairest county in England, a world of woodland and green grass and orchards full of content. But those rocks and crags are the portals of the unknown, and it is there that Lorna Doon beckons us, a symbol, perhaps, of the unattainable in all of our lives, the lovely Lorna Doon. Summer faded into fall, and then winter was upon us. This was the winter of my greatest sorrow, for I did not see my Lorna. Perhaps you have read of that winter. The snows higher than a man's eye, the streams frozen, the trees cracked from the great frost. Nature conspired, it seemed, to carry out the old man's dying wish that we be apart. My son, it does no good to stare out at the window. Go to her. Though you risk your life, go to her. Mother, you know? You know about Lorna? Mothers are not so unaware of what goes on in their children's hearts. Oh, Mother, what shall I do? You must stop tossing and turning at night and shouting her name as if some great guilt hung on your heart. But, Mother, oh, how can I tell you? It, it was her father who killed my father. Old Ensor Doon told us this just before he died. I see. Would you not hate Lorna for this all the days of her life? And you not hate me for loving her? Our family Bible says, Love your enemy. Bring her here. To our farm. Oh, the dooms will follow. Carver Doon is a savage. Our lives will be in danger. Come here. Take my hands. Do you see fear in my eyes? No, Mother. I believe that miracles happen to people who are in love. So I set off across the ice-gripped moors toward my love. I dug my way through drifts. I scaled the frozen heights of Bagworthy Falls, hacking stairs from the silent, solid stream of ice. Then I stood again, a speck of black against the white emptiness of Glendoo. I searched through the empty streets of their village like a man in a dream walking through a land of the dead. At last, I came to the house I knew was Lorna's. Lorna? Lorna? It's John. John Ridd. Lorna! Who? Who is it? Lorna! What have they done to you? Run off to the caves in the hills and left me here to starve. Oh, my darling. Because I said I would not be the leader of their tribe as long as they robbed and killed. And they tried to force me to... To, to marry Carver Doom? Yes. I wish to die, John. For I thought that you had forgotten about me. I've come to take you home. Home? Home. I don't think I've ever known what it means. You shall, my darling. You shall see what it means. The people of Devon still speak of how I kidnapped the most beautiful of the dunes and brought her to my mother's house. Down the icy stairs of Bagworthy Falls, I carried her in my arms. In our home, before the roaring fire, we gave her food and warmth and love. But then, a shadow fell across the snow. A giant black shadow against the winter whiteness. The guns of the tombs are pointed at every corner of your house. Oh, Carver. Oh, John, it's Carver doing At the wink of an eye, we can set your farm blazing. We will stay in this time if our queen, if Lorna Doom, returns to her rightful place in our valley. Let him shout himself out. Before the rise of the sun. If not, you will die. All right, men. 
He's gone. Oh, John, I must go back to Glen Dune. No, Lorna, you will not go back. There's one way they can never take you away from me. At dawn tomorrow, we shall not be here, but standing side by side before Parson Bowden in the parish church. Now, in the sight of God and this company here assembled, I pronounce you man and wife. She turned to me, and from the depths of her eyes she said, I love you. Such soft eyes, such loving eyes, smiling, yet with a touch of happy tears. And then... A gunshot rang through the church, and those eyes were, were filled with death. Some men remember the things that happened to them in great moments of crisis. I recall it only as a hazy and terrible dream. I cannot tell you what I did or felt or thought when I saw Lorna lying at my feet. I asked something ridiculous like what day it was, what month of the year. Then I placed my wife in my mother's arms and went forth to my revenge. The men fell back before me as I headed across the windswept fields towards a giant figure, Carver Dune. Carver? Ah, oh, it's the farmer. I know you have a gun, Carver Dune. I am unarmed. But it is your life or mine, as the will of God will have it. The two of us will not live upon this earth another hour together. <laughs> His bullet hit my shoulder. I sprang forward, knowing that this man had killed everything in the world I loved. My strength was like iron. And in two minutes, I had him helpless on the ground. You'll, you'll kill me. Why shouldn't I? No. Before you die, tell me. Why have you done this thing? She, she was a... Princess, from the day we kidnapped her as a child, she was our princess. Kidnapped her? Then she's not a dune. What difference does it make? Tell me she's not really a dune. Tell me. She's not really a dune. Then her father did not kill Marjorie. <sighs> For this news, I'll let you go, Carpadoon. Go. And thank God I'm not as vicious as you. Go now! Huh? You poor fool, it was I who killed your father! <laughs> he was looking back, taunting me, and he did not see the edge of the cliff. He lost his footing and plunged headlong into the empty valley below. Like a man lost, I, I rode back to our farm. The thought of Lorna's death like a heavy knell in my brain. I could hardly see my mother's face as she met me at the door. Oh, mother. Let me see my wife. She belongs to me even though she is dead. And I shall pray to die so I can be with her. She is not dead, John. She is going to get well. Oh, mother. She is going to live, to be your wife, your home, your happiness. Lorna. Oh, Lorna. Hello, my husband. Year by year, her beauty grows. With the growth of goodness, kindness, true happiness, and above all, with loving. And to this day, each sunbeam that touches the fair county of Devon speaks her name. And the valleys of Devon echo with the thought of her loveliness.
Ted and James Hilton will return in a moment. There's no gift you could give your mother that would mean as much to her as your love, expressed in both words and actions. Now, of course, only you can express your love in action, but you can find a Hallmark card to help you express it in words. And sometimes the right words inspire action, you know. So during this week before Mother's Day, resolve to stop in and see the beautiful collection of Mother's Day cards at the fine stores where you buy all your Hallmark cards. Choose one that says what you want to say to your mother, the one above all others that seems as if it's written just for the two of you. You can find such a one, you know. You can find a Hallmark card to say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it, including that Hallmark on the back which says, you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Whenever you see the name David Niven heading a cast, you can always count on something fine and exciting. And tonight gave us just that. Thank you for being with us on the Hallmark Playhouse tonight, David. I enjoyed being here, Jimmy. You Hallmark folks certainly know how to make a person feel good with all those kind words. You must take your inspiration from Hallmark cards. And we could, too, for, as you know, besides the tradition of friendliness, there's also that long-standing reputation for sincerity. So you can be sure that any words of praise you hear from me are deserved. Well, thank you very much. What are you planning for the Hallmark Playhouse next week? Next week, we shall have our special story for Mother's Day when we dramatize the story of that very famous mother who was Whistler's mother. Our story will be based on the book by Elizabeth Mumford, and our guest for the occasion will be the charming Jane Wyman. Sounds great. I'll be listening. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, David. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose, and our story tonight was dramatized by Lawrence and Lee. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. David Niven will soon be seen in the Universal International release, Appointment with Venus. The role of Lorna Doon tonight was played by Lorene Tuttle, and Sarah Ridd was Virginia Gregg. Others in our cast were Raymond Burr, Norman Field, Ann Whitfield, and Dick Beals. You are invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame every Sunday afternoon on television. Consult your paper for time and station. A nursing career offers girl graduates a professional education, an interesting career in many fields, and the rewarding satisfaction of being of service to others. More nurses are needed. Encourage the girl graduates you know to enroll as a student nurse. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time, when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Jane Wyman in Elizabeth Mumford's Whistler's Mother, and the week following, P.C. Headley's The Marquis de Lafayette, starring Jean-Pierre Amont. And the week after that, Virginia Tapnell Peacock's Marsha Burns on the Hallmark Playhouse. <laughs> Stay tuned for the civilian that will be heard over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.